Greetings, everyone. Craig Hester here with R2AWatches.com, and thank you for joining us as we continue on our journey through all the watches and accessories that are available at R2AWatches.com. If you are watching this on YouTube, be sure to hit like and subscribe or ring that bell. I never know where the heck that bell is, but I'm sure you can find it. I hope so. Uh, that'll give you early notifications. But more important than that, if you really want to know what, want to be in the know about what's going on with R2A watches and specials that we offer and um, uh, custom watches and so forth, you want to join the closed group Vostok Europe Timepieces or VET. Don't let the name fool you. Just because it's called Vostok Europe Timepieces does not mean that it is not all about all of the watches and everything tied to that. Uh, for instance, like this really cool winder here that are available at r2awatches.com. So be sure and do that and you will be in the know. You would be in the know about the watch we're about to talk about. You would have already had the opportunity to get one in advance. I am so excited to be talking about this watch today. This is one I have been waiting months, really months and months to to share with you guys. Um, this is one that's kind of special, near and dear to my heart uh, because, well, first of all, let me explain that this is the SSN 571 watch, which is named for the world's first nuclear submarine. And it is the official watch of the SSN 571 Alumni Association. Now, why am I particularly excited about this? Well, the reason is, oh, look at that dial. <laughs> Sorry, I get swept up sometimes just looking at the watch, um, which I guess I should, that should happen to me, right? Um, this is a watch that actually grew out of a partnership that was developed by R2AWatches.com with the SSN 571 Alumni Association. Now, while I'm sitting here and just chit-chatting, I'm going to show you the watches. I'm not going to talk about the different colors yet, but I'm just going to go back and forth uh, watches in the, uh, the sub-window. <laughs> yeah, okay, well... Bad joke. Um, so it came out of an uh, of a arrangement that we made with the SSN 571 Alumni Association. We were looking for another opportunity. We wanted to do something similar to other brand ambassadorships we had done in the past, like we did the Scott Free Racing. If you guys might remember the Scott Free Racing uh, relationship that we had. Um, and then we still have ongoing, Vostok Europe does, with Benedictus Vanegas, the Dakar driver, with uh, uh, Big Z, the world's strongest man, with Jurgis Karras, the, one of the world's greatest aerobatic pilots. So we wanted to have something else based here in the U.S. that would be a great brand ambassadorship and relationship um, that would work, really be a good fit for both Vostok Europe and uh, whoever the organization was. Now, you may not know this. Some of you probably will because you've watched me over the years, but we are based just 20 to 25 miles from the Sur Submarine Force Museum uh, in Groton, Connecticut, where the SSN 571 is permanently moored and, and it's free and open to the public uh, to tour. Now, to be clear, um, right now during COVID, they aren't open. I just want to make sure that everybody understands that since I happen to be doing the video during COVID. I don't want to direct somebody to come see this fantastic submarine and then they get here and they're like, oh, Hester said they were open and, and we, we're not. Um, but that is obviously an unusual set of circumstances. It is usually open year round. Um, so again, the SSN 571 Submarine Museum uh, excuse me, submarine uh, watch inspired by the inspired by and in appreciation and coordination with the veterans of the submarine service who are the alumni association of the SSN 571. In fact, let me read this on the back for you. In honor of veterans of the United States submarine service. That's just so cool. And the thing is, it's not, that's not a, it's not just a story. That's not, um, you know, that's not just something we slapped on here. We really did put together this amazing, amazing uh, relationship with the members of the Alumni Association. And before I go any further, I do want to give a shout out, shout outs particularly to Gary Schmid, the now previous president of the association, who was the main person that I worked with, who's been just so patient and, and, and so great to work with throughout every bit of this. Uh, and shout out to Doug Turner for helping out with the marketing, um, with the new to the new president, Bob Childs. Um, they're just great guys, just great veterans of, of, of the U.S. Submarine Service and have been just a pleasure to work with. And I, I wanted to get that out, out of the way. Uh, before I go any further in terms of uh, people who may not be familiar with us, if you aren't familiar with Vostok Europe, which is the brand that built the watch, even though we put together the, the, the relationship here and, and had the, um, 
and, and set everything up with the alumni, the, the brand is Vostok Europe. If you're not familiar with Vostok Europe, Vostok Europe is a boutique watch brand based in Vilnius, Lithuania. Every watch is hand assembled by their full-time team of seven watchmakers there. I like to say that Vostok Europe starts with a blank piece of paper and finishes with a completed watch, uh, or more accurately starts with a blank computer screen because they use SolidWorks to do their designing. Um, they do so much more than your typical uh, watch, uh, boutique size watch brand does. They do the things basically short of make, uh, building their own movements. Um, you know, they really do everything. They design the watch, they have their own in-house designers, they have their own in-house watchmakers. Um, they really do a tremendous amount uh, when it comes to their watches. Uh, so more than you would typically get from a boutique watch brand. So that's who Vostok Europe is. Oh, and let me mention too, if, if their construction process is so amazing. If you haven't seen it, the very first video on our YouTube channel is actually a video going through their entire construction process, which is uh, a sight to behold in and of itself. Um, before I do a tour of the watches, I want to quickly talk a little bit about the SSN571. Now, granted, you could go out there and, and find this information on your own. Um, but, of course, it's important to note that it is it was the world's first uh, nuclear submarine. Um, and one of the things that really separated... Uh, it wasn't just about the fact that it was the first nuclear submarine. It was actually used for, for many peaceful things. Uh, one of the things that the, that the veterans, and Gary has mentioned this to, many, to me many times, um, is what they call Panapo, one of the greatest achievements. The, the uh, SSN 571 was the first submarine to ever submerged go from the Pacific to the Atlantic underneath the North Pole. In fact, I'll read you real quick. Uh, perhaps her greatest achievement came in 1958 when the SSN-571 sailed beneath the North Pole, starting the Pacific <clears throat> and navigating through to the Atlantic. While the Soviets were com commanding space with Sputnik, the U.S. saw this achievement as a technological counterbalance. Special navigation equipment had to be installed as the standard compass would go haywire right beneath the magnetic pole. There was even a backup plan to shoot torpedoes into the ice above should the ship get lost and have to surface to determine her bearing. The journey from the Barrow Sea Valley to the coast of Greenland lasted 96 hours, over 1,590 1, nautical miles. <clears throat> One of the things I did notice as I was doing my research about, uh, about the, the ship, um, there was a belief at that time that there would start to be, um, they would build these big cargo submarines which kind of sounds silly to us today but uh, it may, who knows it could have worked um these these cargo ship sized submarines and that they would go underneath the pole on a regular basis like a shipping lane uh, which that's just interesting to think about if that had, had been developed what that would look like today um so obviously you know you can go and learn a great deal more about um about the SSN 571 on your own. Uh, it, it is an amazing piece of, of equipment, but what I am more excited about is getting to know the people who were involved in it and who served on the ship and uh, getting to work with them on this special project. All right, so now let me quickly go through a, a tour of the watch um, because that is ultimately what this is about, is for you to see the watches and understand them. Um, First of all, there are nine different styles. Now, we only have, what do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven of the styles here because two of them are already sold out. Uh, they were sold out pretty much the, about the time they got in. Um, so I'll talk about those separately, but I did want to quickly go through the styles we have. First of all, there are two movements in the SSN 571. One is the standard bearer bulletproof NH35. Let me get that going for you so you can see the second hand sweep. There we go. So there's the NH35 and then the VK61 Mecha Quartz Chronograph, which is an amazing, amazing uh, quartz chronograph movement that is in this watch. Uh, in fact, the, the quartz chronograph movement in these watches, actually the movement itself actually costs more than the automatic movement, uh, the NH35. So this is a tremendous, tremendous movement. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, so we have the green with the brushed kind of pre-aged plating. Um, let's see. We've got the light gray 
in the titanium. I believe this is titanium. Oh, no, this is some stainless steel. My apologies. The brushed on the stainless steel gives it a look of titanium, but there is a titanium model, which we don't have right here right now. Um, another stainless steel with this beautiful, beautiful sunray blue. And then we've got two bronze, one bronze in the chronograph version, and one bronze with the green and the automatic. Then there is the all black with the beige subdials. I particularly like this color, color scheme. And then, as I showed at the beginning, the orange with the light blue subdials. Ugh, this just rocks. Just such an amazing, amazing color combo on this one. So, specs. Where are we on specs? Let's see. Well, first of all, you need to know that this watch it comes is one of the uh, watches that is in the category of the higher-end dive watches of Vostok Europe. Uh, if you're familiar with the Anchar or the Lunaco 2 um, or the Energia, this is going to be in that category, both in terms of specs and uh, quality and uh, pricing and so forth are going to all be in that neighborhood. Now, some of the things that are just pretty much a given when it comes to those models is you're going to have two straps. In this case, they have the... Uh, the extension, the spring extension style, so you can put it over the wetsuit and then it'll pop back into place. They've never done that before on Vostok Europe. I really like that they did that this time. And then it comes with a really, really beautiful contrast stitched leather strap as well. So they're going to they're going to come with two straps. It's going to come with a changing tool. Uh, every one of the higher end watches also comes with this Arby's receipt. Just kidding. Um, it is actually the results of the water tightness test and they put the number of the watch the limited edition number of the watch and you can see that it passed in this case would be 300 meter water resistance so these are all uh, professional grade dive quality watches of course that means it has a unidirectional rotating bezel for a lapsed time and it's at least 20 atm which in the case of the ssn 571 it is 30 atm they all have this beautiful, beautiful image of the ship on the case back. It says the world's first nuclear submarine, SSN 571, in honor of the United States Submarine Service. And then the rest is your typical um, and tells you that it's, it's, it's 30 ATM. Uh, the other thing that this one has, like all of the high-end dive watches have, is this has the tritium tube technology. Now, if you're not familiar with the tritium tube technology, that's the technology where... Um, there are laser sealed glass tubes that stay constantly lit uh, so that no matter what lighting conditions you're in, you're going to be able to see the watch. This is not like Superluminova where you charge it up in the sun and then it, it shines brightly for a while and then it fades. Um, this is going to be, you can throw it in a drawer for a year, for three years, and you can bring it back out. It's going to have the same level of illumination. Now, one of the things about this one is this is the second watch. Now, I'm actually going to be showing you a chapter ring from uh, a Lunaco 2, but it's the same technology and the same configuration. This is the second watch that Vostok Europe has done to stand up tritium tubes in the little candle-like reflectors. If you'll look, you can see it's the same thing on here. Let's see if there's one that maybe show it a little more clear. Uh, they're all about the same in terms of trying to see it through the glass. Um, so they stand up to give you 360 degree illumination. Most of the time, tritium tubes lay flat on the dial. And that hides almost half of the illumination by standing them up. Then you're getting 360 degree, <coughs> excuse me, 360 degree illumination, which makes them far brighter than if they're laying down flat. And as far as we know, Vostok Europe is the only company in the world that's doing stand-up tritium tubes. I haven't seen another watch that's been doing them. Uh, the other thing about this one, it's not quite as big as most uh, Vostok Europe watches are these days. I, I like to bring out the caliper. The caliper? Bring out the caliper. And I'm going to show you that this is 45.4. 45.5. The actual uh, official specs say 45.7, so call it 46 if you want. But for a Vostok Europe, that's actually not that big of a watch. Here, I'm going to put one on my wrist. It's 
so you can see what it looks like. I have about a seven and a half inch wrist, so I do not have a big wrist by any means. This particular one wears extremely comfortably for me. Uh, we purposely went smaller, so the veterans of the SSN571 who may not be into 48, 49 millimeter watches would be comfortable with wearing a watch that was closer to the 45 range. Now I mentioned the Mecca Quartz earlier. This is the VK61 Mecca Quartz. Now what does that mean? That means that there's a module in this watch. You have a quartz watch that runs basically runs everything, but then there's a module in here that's actually driven mechanically for the chronograph. Now what does that do? Well first of all, when you start the chronograph you can see that it doesn't tick like a quartz does. It actually has a nice smooth, uh, better than a lot of automatics, um, a nice smooth action. Then the other thing is, it, it when you reset it, it instantly flies back. It has an instant flyback. Whereas a lot of quartz watches, um, or anything that's not mecha quartz actually, you get that motion where it goes, you know, it turns back around um, counter, uh, excuse me, clockwise, and it can take a couple of seconds. Um, the downside of that is if you're trying to measure things rap in rapid succession, you're not able to do that as easily with that style of quartz chronograph. So that's why Vostok Europe is using the VK64 in this particular watch. Um, excuse me, it's the VK61, I believe, in this one, not the VK64. Yeah, the VK61 in this particular watch. And the difference between the VK61 and VK64 is that in this case, you do have the constant second hand, which you don't have in the other. Every one of them comes with this really cool little... This really cool little uh, brochure, uh, it talks about some of what I talked about earlier, about Panapo, Pacific to Atlantic under the North Pole. It gives you a brief history of the boat, some really great photos. We actually were able to go over, this was really cool too, we were able to go over to the Sur 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 Submarine Force Museum and we were able to go into the archives, uh, which is not something that's open to the public, and scan in some really, really cool photography uh, to, to, to use with our uh, supporting materials for the SSN571. Every Vostok Europe high-end dive watch comes with the, an amazing Pelican case and it's no different for the uh, SSN571. You're going to have, it has the place for your extra strap, um, the place for the watch, uh, comes with the, the um, extra materials. Often we're able to uh, send a little little set of Vostok Europe stickers as well. These are amazing dry, dry boxes. They're made in the same facility as Pelican cases are made. I uh, just want you to just listen to this. Just shows you how well made this box is. So that is one of the things that's going to come with your SSN571. Um, let me see. We didn't do the thickness. It is... almost 16 millimeters thick. Now, let me talk about size a little bit more. Um, I know there are some of you who are like really only into big watches. I, you know, well, first of all, again, we needed to do, we needed to make sure we weren't going to oversize them for the veterans of the SSN 571. The boat um, was decommissioned in 1980. So this is not a bunch of young guys. Okay. Um, so we need to make sure they were going to be comfortable wearing the watch. Um, the, the the advent of the really really big watches is a relatively new thing now i'm sure there's some of them are going to be very happy wanting a larger watch um so we kind of compromised with the four, almost 46 millimeter but i do want to let you know with 16 millimeters thick that by no means is this a tiny watch i mean if you're still into big watches um i don't think you're going to be disappointed with the size of the ssn 571 i just really think that it's a good all-around size um, it's a good fit for 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 a lot of different uh, options. Um, now let's not be let's make sure one thing is clear. This is a sport watch. This is not a dress watch. Um, so there's no question when you're wearing this, you're going to be wearing a sport watch uh, for sure. So screw in crown, not surprising. 300 meter water resistant screw in crown. Uh, it does have the Gorilla Glass system. It has and this one. This one has I believe it's a four millimeter thick. Uh, Gorilla, Gorilla Glass or K1 Mineral Crystal. Uh, what makes a K1 a K1? Um, if you use the Mohs scale, the Mohs hardness scale, the uh, K1 is in, right in the m middle between sapphire and mineral. Sapphire is a 9, mineral is a 5, K1 is a 7. So you get the best of both worlds with your crystal on this watch. Um, 
And I believe that really is the highlights. Like I said, I've got seven of the styles here. I'll show you the pictures. There's a, a bright white that I didn't have to show here. And then there is a kind of a, a lavender blue sub dials on a titanium. So there you have it, everybody. This is the SSN 571 from Vostok Europe, built in cooperation with the Alumni Association and veterans of the American Submarine Service. And I am so proud and excited to have been able to do this with them and look forward to working with them for many years to come. Until next time, I'm Craig Hester. Keep watching.